welcome to this David Icke Dot Connector video cast. Well, I saw another poll this week, which kind of continues a theme, that more and more people, particularly the young, have sympathy with socialism in the United States and running the country on socialist lines. And this is not just confined to America, it's a theme you can see in different parts of the world. And the problem, it seems, is that, again, especially the young, have uh, lost confidence in what is called capitalism. And so the idea is that if we replace capitalism with socialism, then it'll all be all right. Never has been, but it'll all be all right. So it's all about isms, you see. Everyone must have an ism. And what are isms? They are ideologies. And what are ideologies except prison cells for the mind? Indeed, prison cells for human society. Because an ism, an ideology, basically says everything Every situation, every problem has to be filtered through the lens of the ism. And then it's all all right and everything's fine. Uh, and yet um, what's happening now is that the capitalist ism is losing support and the social ism ism is gaining support, certainly according to these polls. But actually, they are simply different expressions of the same mindset that believes one ideology fits every situation. It's a one-stop shop to deal with everything. And of course, what happens, whether it's capitalism, not capitalism at all, as I'll come to, it's cartelism, or socialism, what happens with either of them, as history has shown us, is they produce massive inequality and loss of freedom. And um, when you think that this socialism and its more extreme version, communism, have been responsible for, it's estimated, around a hundred million dead people under socialist communist regimes, and then you look at how the vast inequalities that are perpetrated by capitalism, brackets, cartelism, how many people have died and suffered because of that ideology. What you have is two ideologies, isms, neither of which work in terms of the entirety of human society. But, see, we've been kidded because the 1%, if you break it down and you do the research, the 1% are actually behind capitalism, cartelism, and also behind socialism. So what they do is they move between two apparent opposites to give people the idea that they've got choice and to play people off against each other, I'm a capitalist, I'm a socialist, when all the time the same 1%, as we call it today, has control of both socialist societies and uh, so-called capitalist uh, societies. 
and the scam is being played again. And um, these are the dictionary definitions of the two. Capitalism is defined as an economic system characterized by private or corporate ownership of capital goods, by investments that are determined by private decision and by prices production and the distribution of goods that are determined mainly by competition in a free market. Now, under that definition alone, we do not live in a capitalist society. We live in a cartelist society. Because what happens is a few hoard control of the money, the capital, and in doing so, they hoard control of the system by creating cartels that stitch up the so-called free market and make it anything but free. So you have the big pharma cartel, you have the biotech cartel, the oil cartel, and uh, the banking cartel come to that, and so on. So we don't have capitalism, it's cartelism. And then we have um, socialism. This is the definition. Any of various economic and political theories advocating collective or governmental ownership and administration of the means of production and distribution of goods. Now, look at capitalism, cartelism, and what you have. Centralization of power in the hands of a few by controlling who has the money brackets power and who doesn't what is socialism it's the centralization of power in the hands of a few to dictate and impose their will on everyone else and the socialist structure is even easier to control than the capitalism cartel structure. Because with capitalism cartelism, you have to hoard the money and build corporations and, 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 and grab more and more of markets so you control them and so on. With socialism, communism, what you have is the very hierarchical structure of government and military and law enforcement is um, laid out so the few dictate to the many and control law enforcement to impose that will upon the many who don't want to have their lives controlled by a gang of dictators. Um, so what both of them are and what all isms are, whether they're religious isms or political isms, is dogma. Dogma. Definition. A principle or set of principles laid down by an authority as incontrovertibly true, the dogmas of faith, for instance, a fixed, especially religious belief or set of beliefs that people are expected to accept without any doubts. Anybody recognize that? That's what's happening to the world today. This is how this socialist society of central control is being introduced step by step and young people through the schools and universities that I'll come to are being programmed and indoctrinated to believe in it without seeing what it's done when it's been tried. And political correctness and the climate cult and all these things, which I'll get into in terms of relevance to this, are what? A fixed especially religious, climate cult, 
belief or set of beliefs that people are expected to accept without any doubts. You are a climate denier. You are a fascist. You are a Nazi. Which is what we have now instead of um, mature debate. So what's happening is particularly the young are being indoctrinated through the school and university system, which bravely calls itself education, excuse me why I laugh, um, around the world. They're being indoctrinated into a mindset, into a belief system, into basically an ideology. Because what this cabal wants, this 1%, is to set up the hierarchical structure of power that is most easy for them to control, which is a socialist communist society. This is why um, it's so effective in China currently in controlling vast, vast numbers of people and what they can do, what they can think and what they can say. And part of this is to demonize capitalism in the minds of young people without telling them it's actually cartelism and not capitalism at all in its true definition. And to get them, for instance, in mountains of debt through student debt to go to university to be programmed into this Talk about a feedback loop. And if you are a student or a young person who has been put into debt by these financial cartels for much of the rest of your life, just to receive what is often a crap and irrelevant and useless, quote, degree, then there's a very, very good chance that you are not going to be a fan of capitalism, which is completely understandable. And so what you become open to, you become open to um, other ideologies, the other side of the 1% polarity paradigm, socialism. And um, in a book, um, a book has just come out called The Trigger, which um, exposes the real perpetrators of 9-11, but far, far more than that. It puts it into context, in, uh, into society in general. I, um, I talk about a guy. He was a former Soviet KGB uh, operative, a defector. Uh, who described in 1985 how you transform a society through young people and through the school and university system. See again if you recognize today what he described then. And I should make the point, what I'm saying here is not it, it's a Russian plot. The Russians are doing it. No, no. If you look back at history, again, I go into it in the trigger, you find that Marxism, which um, basically was the foundation of socialism and communism, it was fronted up in terms of its introduction and its ideology by a guy called Karl Marx. Karl Marx was a front man for the bankers and the cartels that dictate human life. So this is a cabal, global cabal system and technique. It was just used in the Soviet Union and now it's being used on the United States and in Britain and elsewhere. 
See what you think. Uh, this is what I write in the book, The Trigger. The takeover of countries through the perceptions of the population was described in 1985 by Soviet KGB defector Yuri Bezmanov, who was trained in the subversion doctrine, which he described as a four-step plan to subjugate societies. Here we go. The first stage he called demoralization. He says this takes 15 to 20 years in which generations of students are systematically programmed in the school and college system to transform their perception of reality while other information and perspectives are suppressed. Look around. Marxist Leninist ideology was being pumped into the quote soft head of at least three generations of American students, of course it's happening around the world as well, without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, he said. And he, uh, he went on to describe this demoralization stage of programming. Quote, Exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who is demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Even if I shower him with information, with authentic truth, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and uh, show him concentration camps, he will refuse to believe it until he gets a kick in the back bottom. In other words, until the penny drops that the system that they've been supporting and uh, promoting to be introduced starts to be introduced and they then realise what it's really all about. And this is what is being perpetrated on the young today. And I say the young because, of course, they want the young or they know the young are going to be the adults when this stuff is meant to come in full blown. They want it programmed to accept it until that line is crossed when they realize what it's really about and it's too late. Um, when the military boot crashes, he said, then he will understand. The student will understand what he's been supporting. Demoralization, he said, is followed by uh, stages that he called destabilization, crisis and normalization, in which normalization means the imposition of a new normal, which means a transformed society. Now, look at what's been happening. When you, when you look back at things happening today, in the areas of political correctness and uh, transgender um, imposition and uh, all this political correct, climate cult, woke extremism, go back not very far and then ponder on what people would have said then about the way society is now. They would have said, society's going to be like that. Don't be crazy. We'd never accept it. We have. That's how society has become what it's become. And you see nothing yet if we go on accepting it. So what we're experiencing, witnessing today, is the normalization of something that's been planned and indoctrinated through the schools and universities, year after year after year. Um, it says here, a, a poll of American 18 to 24 year olds in early 2019 found that 61% were open to a socialist society. And there's been other polls that basically support that theme. Um, and uh, once the programmed promoters have played their part as essential pawns, they would be, quote, lined up against the wall and shot, um, Besmanov said. 
They think they will come to power, but that will never happen, of course. Of course. Young people and uh, the woke generations are being systematically manipulated to promote, demand, and press for a society they think will be based on fairness when it's a society designed to delete the freedom in its entirety of the rest of their lives and their children's lives, etc. And um, these polls suggest that a significant number of people are falling for it and they need to wake up to what's going on before they cross the line into inevitability. And we're not far away. So out of this whole process of perceptual programming has come, and again, all these are elements, as I've been writing about for decades, of this cabal 1% agenda for the world. They have uh, come together and expressed themselves as the climate cult, which is seeking to justify the lies they're telling about the nature of human caused climate change, the hoax, and their solutions to the problem is what? a centralization of power in the world that allows the few to dictate to everyone else to save the planet from catastrophe. That is absolutely the structure of global control that this 1% wants. Then you've got political correctness, which is another outgrowth of the same mentality, the same woke mentality. And political correctness is simply manipulating the population to silence itself to stop other opinions and other information challenging this narrative, this indoctrination that is being imposed on the population, um, especially uh, the young. Then you have this, again, another aspect of the woke mentality where everything is racist you can uh, find anything that people say, however blatantly not racist, to be racist. I watched um, a clip uh, of this um, woke hero, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the New York Congresswoman, in which she's in a congressional hearing interviewing someone and making the point that black people in America are the main victims of climate change and that white people are the perpetrators of climate change. Well, all of them. And this is what happens with this ideological perceptual manipulation you get people to be everything they rail against while thinking they are uh, the opposite of what they rail against so it's okay to write off an entire race of people white people in one line, white people are responsible. But say something, even the mildest of thing about other people, and you're a racist and a Nazi. This is confirmation of the scale of self-deception and 
mind control, perception control, to which so many have succumbed in this onslaught on their minds. And of course, if you're controlling the so-called education system, you've got control of what goes into those minds five days a week, week after week, month after month, year after year. Because what we call education is a programming operation. It's a perceptual programming operation. That's what it is. That's what it's there for. And then what you have is this thing called intersectionality. Because woke words tend to have lots of syllables. Intersectionality. And what that means, apparently, is that all these different aspects of woke, anti-racism, uh, the climate cult, political correctness, um, transgender, all of it, are um, all connected. And, and, and the idea is that you, even though they, those different groups will have different um, uh, opinions about different things and, and may not agree on everything, you get them to agree on a common enemy. The common enemy is um, capitalism uh, and... Um, the personification of that enemy currently in America is Donald Trump. So everything's focused there and you have this intersectionality. We're all in this together. And what they're doing is creating this united, uh, this united group of groups to focus attention on changing society in the way they're being manipulated to change it, even though they don't realize they're being manipulated. They think it's coming from their own minds. And it's all based on, on narcissism because the foundation of it all is to convince your warrior army, which you'll ditch when you get where you want to get, to convince them that they are right. I am right. And when you think I am right and there are no other possibilities, then suddenly the free speech of other people who want to articulate, the, articulate those other pos possibilities, well, they don't matter anymore. What's the point in, in them having free speech when they, all they do is say something that's not right? Because... I am right, and they're saying something different to me, so they must be wrong. What's the point of free speech? Someone said something about me once in a newspaper. What is the benefit of allowing him to speak, right? This is the woke mentality. And um, so what we've got now, this is how far it's gone in being absorbed. A poll this week. 51% polled believe that the First Amendment, which gives free speech to Americans, is outdated and needs to be rewritten to, quote, reflect the cultural norms of society. To reflect the normalization of the new society indoctrinated to replace the old one. Nearly half of those surveyed, 48%, believe that hate speech should be illegal, with half of those people considering jail time a reasonable punishment. The poll did not define hate speech, leaving it up to the respondent. And what they're doing, of course, is constantly expanding what is termed hate speech. And with each expansion, more and more free speech is deleted by dubbing it hate speech. Now, where, where do you find the destruction of free speech by making it illegal? Where do you get book burning from by making certain opinions illegal. Where do those things manifest? They manifest in fascist societies and they manifest in communist societies. So what we are, uh, and by the way, 
fascism and communism are just different masks on the same face, it means centralization of power, dictating to everyone else. And so what we're seeing in this politically correct, woke unfolding of society transformation is the unfolding of fascism stroke communism being visited upon the Western world. And um, Bob Listad, executive director of the Campaign for Free Speech, told the uh, Washington Beacon that, quote, free speech is under more threat than previously believed. Not here. It wasn't more than previously believed. I've been pointing out that this was coming for decades. The findings are frankly extraordinary, he said. Our free speech rights and our free press rights have evolved well over 200 years and now people seem to be rethinking them. See, Besmanov and the techniques of societal transformation via perceptional transformation. More than 60% of those surveyed wanted to see free speech curbed in some way. And what then happens to this intersectionality? We're all in this together is you start uh, playing different elements of that against each other. Because what you want is divide and rule. Uh, and the more divide you can instill, the more rule you have. So now what we're seeing is elements like feminism that were part of this woke coalition are now seeing their rights diminished and imposed upon by the transgender element of the woke coalition, not least in the area of women's sport, where people with male bodies who say they identify as women are taking part in women's sport with all the physical advantages and staggeringly sits back, can't believe it, gas for breath, they're winning and breaking records leaving women to work as hard as they possibly can and still know before the gun goes off, they've got no chance of winning because some body next to them who says they identify as a woman in a big strapping body is obviously going to have the advantage over them. And eventually what happens is that the in this case, the woke mentality is pushing and pushing to destroy the freedoms and the, uh, the freedom of speech and expression of their targets. And then they start to realize, as feminism is starting to realize, that actually it's starting to happen to them. And this is the process I was talking about earlier where eventually you reach a point where everything this group has demanded happens to other people they don't agree with starts happening to them. And um, ideology is basically black and white, it sees the world through black and white because the ideological filter decides opinions, actions, and outcomes on the basis of the ideology, no matter what area of society you're looking at. And so with capitalism uh, cartelism, what you have is the um, imposition of that ideology by controlling money and the flows of money, and you impose that ideology and silence opposition to that ideology by controlling 
who has money and who doesn't, who has power and who doesn't, and therefore who has the capacity to, to challenge the impositions of capitalism, cartelism, and who doesn't. How many people that want to challenge things going on in the world can't do that as effectively as they would wish because they do not have the finance to support that. And then with capitalism, therefore, you have the control at the center by the hoarding of power by corporations which then control governments. With socialism, communism, you have this structure of top-down imposition and because it comes through government, still controlled by the 1% but in the background, you have the whole law enforcement military uh, structure to impose your will on the population and to target anyone that wishes to challenge what's happening and to expose what's happening. So if you look at... Um, Soviet Russia, you look at China today, etc., and wherever this ideology has been imposed, you see this structure whereby the government says this, how, this is how it is, and anyone who says, actually, I don't agree with that, is silenced, even to the point of disappearing. And so what we have is ideology and what we don't have is what we so badly need to sort all this out and that is empathy never mind political structures and hierarchies empathy that has to be the starting point of freedom and justice and opportunity for all. Empathy is the ability to put yourself in the feelings and the situations of others. And through that empathy, you can, um, you can see the unfairness and the injustice of what they are experiencing and through a desire generated, motivated by empathy, you wish to put that right. What woke people will say is we have empathy. We have empathy for this. We have empathy for these people and those people. But they don't. They have sympathy. They have sympathy for people that attract their sympathy because that's their ideology. Empathy does not filter itself through ideology. It just is. So a extreme capitalist cartelist will have sympathy for fellow extreme capitalist cartelists in how something, situation or whatever has affected them. If there's a I know an increase in taxation or something, they will have sympathy with that. Oh, they're taxing those billionaires like me. But they won't give a damn about all the people who are suffering the consequences in poverty and deprivation of the cartelist way of running a society. 
So they don't have empathy, they have sympathy. And the woke mentality, again, has uh, sympathy for people within its ideological circle. But it doesn't have empathy because what empathy does, it has empathy for everyone in every situation. So it would have empathy with the unfairness of people through no fault of their own. And it's not always through no fault of their own, by the way. They would have empathy for people who, know, through no fault of their own, because of the way the system works, has ended up homeless. And that empathy, if it is um, expressed through um, governments, etc., would say, this is not acceptable. We can't have a situation where we are spending billions and trillions on the military and killing people while people are living in the streets in Los Angeles and New York. Empathy won't allow that. Ideology will. Ideology will. And at the same time, empathy would have empathy with people working in a, if you like, capitalist situation, working their asses off seven days a week to run a business and keep it going. And a government coming along and taking their profits away in taxation and regulation taxes and all, all these other forms of taxation that end up paying for things like killing people with a vast military. Empathy that would have empathy with homeless people would also have empathy with someone working their ass off trying to run a business and having their, uh, their income from that hard work being taken by the government. Empathy is just that. It's empathy for every situation where there is unfairness and injustice. So you don't look at people running businesses and people working for businesses or homeless and unemployed. You don't look at them as, as individual groups. Yes, my sympathy is with these people or my sympathy is with those people. What you do is you have empathy for all injustice and unfairness, no matter what form it may manifest. And until we have a society and a governmental structure system that comes from empathy and a sense of fairness and justice for all and not ideology, the one-stop shop that's supposed to fit everything, then nothing's going to change. Going from cartelism to socialism and back to cartelism and back to socialism. It's a tennis match going nowhere except in the same direction we've always gone. We don't need a change of ideology. We need a shift in consciousness. A shift in consciousness that takes people from being woke to being awake. Albert Einstein once said that you can't solve problems with the same level of consciousness that created them. The capitalist, cartelist, socialist, communist tennis match are different expressions of the same consciousness and thus will never solve the problems that they have both created. I say to young people, those in history have fallen for what you're falling for now. 
don't repeat it for your sakes, not mine.